A few weeks ago, my wife and I had some new living room furniture delivered, and I had been sitting in this chair for about 30 seconds when I decided that the best place for me to place my drink was on this armrest right here. My drink had been sitting there for about 10 seconds before my wife reminded me that a cold drink that's got condensation on the glass probably isn't best suited for sitting on a wood finish like this. So we tried putting coasters on it, and coasters would get knocked off easily, which just meant that we were going to end up with drinks on the floor. Then I remembered that I had some wood filament, so I took Diffusion 360 to see if I could design something that would be functional enough to sit on this armrest and not get knocked off easily. While I busted out my digital calipers and took measurements of the arm in two different places, this is where I noted that it tapered. Then I measured the thickness of it, and also took out a beer glass and measured how big the base was so that I would know how big the ring had to be. From then, it was just making a rudimentary, very terrible drawing as to how my finished cup holder was going to look. After launching Fusion 360, the first thing I need to do is draw a line to represent how wide my object's going to be. In this case, it's going to be 96 millimeters on the outer perimeter. With that line, I plan to make it basically 96 millimeters square. So I'll attack another line going up 96 millimeters as well. Now I noted that the chair actually tapers ever so slightly, so I want it to go from 96 millimeters down to 94 millimeters. The taper is only on the outside, so one edge will be straight and the other one will handle the tapering in. And that represents the basic size and shape of the top of the cup holder. Next, we need to give it some depth. We'll go ahead and make the thickness 2 millimeters, and it extrudes it automatically. Now I'm going to want to give it the bracket part that will allow it to cup around the armrest. So we'll draw on this side, and I want each... Uh, and I want each arm to be two millimeters. Using that two millimeter guide, I can then make my upper one as well, and then join the two dots. So again, two millimeters, following the same line. And then all that's left to do is connect the dots. And that will make up the one side of the arm that will go down and cup around the armrest. So again, we're going to want to give this some depth, so we'll go ahead and highlight the face and do a press pull. And we want this to be 38 millimeters. As you can see, we now have one arm done. Now we need to repeat the process on the other side. So again, measuring in two millimeters. And two millimeters. And connect the dots. Again, we will bring this up to 38 millimeters. We'll do a press pull on this side. And again, we will bring it up to 38 millimeters. Now, additionally, I would like it to wrap around on the bottom so it isn't easy to knock off or slide. So we're also going to add hooks on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and we'll rotate so we can see the inside of one of the faces. Activate the line tool again. Again, we just want these to be two millimeters. And straight line up. We'll rotate back around so we can see what we just did. And then we will do a press pull on the face that we've just created. 
and we'll bring it out to six millimeters. Rotating around, we complete the same modification on the opposite side. Finally, we want to add a round guard off the top of it, so it's not easy to knock a drink out of it. We'll go ahead and rotate so we can see the top view. What I like to do is find the center of the piece I've created just by drawing an X in the middle. This makes it very easy to visualize. Next, we're going to put in a circle. This circle represents the outer pattern of the ring we're putting on it to prevent the drinks from falling off. We'll make this 75 millimeters. Once again, we'll add another circle. This will represent the inner diameter. And by measuring my glasses, I know 70 millimeters ought to cover it. Finally, we just want to add some depth, so we'll do a press pull on the components of the ring. Now you can see the arrow is actually pointing the opposite direction that we want right now, but that's okay because you can just enter a negative value of that 10 millimeters and it'll pop right out. So that's not too bad. It's a square bracket, but there isn't a ton of style to it. So we can do some cleanup to make it look a little bit prettier. We can go ahead and do a fillet on the edges, which is nice and easy to do. You select all the edges that you want to add a nice little curve to, and select the curve you want to give it. So we'll go ahead and give it a two millimeter there. On the ring, once again, we can go ahead and give it a fillet. Give it a three on there. And then for the bracket underneath, since the chair arm isn't perfectly square, it has some curving on it, what I'm going to want to do is add a bit of detailing so that it's not completely square edges. So we'll go modify. We'll do a chamfer. We'll select the corner and we'll tack on a two millimeter chamfer there. As you can see, instead of it being a square edge, now we have a 45 degree angle connecting these two sides. All that's left to do is repeat the process for the other three parts where they join. And there we have our completed piece. We can then send the object we just made to Kira by clicking Make, 3D Print, selecting the object, and clicking OK. And in just a few seconds, it pops up automatically in the slicer. From here, you can orientate it however you feel is going to give it the best print. For me, I think the best print is probably going to be achieved by putting it on its end, and then going ahead and giving it support everywhere. Now it's time to send it to the printer. This is the result of the initial print. So I had some Z-banding issues and the print in and of itself didn't have thick enough walls to be super sturdy. So the idea was to have a little bit of flex so it would hold on to the edges, but unfortunately that little bit of flex meant that it actually snapped the first time I put it on. But luckily, since filament isn't terribly expensive and we can go back and modify our original designs, I was able to give it another shot. Now I printed this on my RepRap printer that I designed for doing large builds. There's a bit of vibration in the print, so I don't use it for super detailed stuff. But it worked out perfect for this because the vibrations actually kind of gave it a wood grain appearance. As you can see, it fits on there just nice, and I'm gonna be putting felt underneath it to make sure it doesn't damage the surface underneath. But then I started thinking, this is wood. 
And it's supposed to mimic the properties of regular wood, which means we should be able to paint it or stain it. And I still have some of the stain left over from when I stained our end tables, which are pretty close in shape. So while this looks pretty nice the way it is, and it has been sanded a bit, I think if the stain will adhere to it nicely, it's going to match even better. So first I give the can of stain a nice shake and pop the top off of it. At this point I decided to test the stain on the broken one beforehand to make sure that it was going to stain the way I wanted it to. I go around testing the different edges to see how it takes the stain. At this point I'm testing my striping technique to see if I can give the appearance of extra wood grain when I do the full size one. So then I started staining the ring, making my way around the outer and inner edge of it. Here I am striping it, although the striping technique ended up being ultimately unsuccessful. It became pretty uniform once I applied the rest of the stain. I quickly applied a fully uniform coat all the way around. The instructions let me know that I should wait 15 minutes and then use a rag to wipe off any excess. Then it came time to apply the second coat, which I applied pretty much exactly the same as the first. And here we are. The next day, the stain is now dry, and we're ready to see how it turned out. And there we go. Now, it's not as dark as I was hoping. With any project like this, there's always going to be lessons learned, and I have a few from this one. But it does look significantly better than when it was just the plain wood. And it looks a lot nicer going onto the armrest. Now, my chair need no longer fear the condensation that comes from the bottle. So what would I do different next time? Well, I think I would model it so that I could print it in three separate pieces and lock it together. Or at least curve the inside and the outside of the ring so that it didn't require support material. Because that's where the print turned out the messiest. I would have used a different finish, one that has a uh, built-in barothane or urethane coating that pops up on the top so that it would be automatically protected. Uh, as it stands, I'm going to have to go back and put a clear coat on this. I also probably would have spent a little more time sanding. While it does add to some of the characteristics to leave some of the lines that were left in it and make it look a little more wood grain, I think I would have preferred a little more even finish, but luckily this isn't an expensive print to do, so eventually I will reprint it and test out my theories in terms of how that stuff works on it. But for now we have a good functional print that looks pretty good and certainly does the job. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for this build. I hope you guys found it informative, and if you did, why not toss me a thumbs up? If you're new here, why not subscribe so you'll be notified when I put out new content? And if you have something you want me to try and tackle in the future, or you have comments as to how I can make this better, toss in the comments below. And until next time, stay creative.